Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. And in this little series I'm putting together, we started off at Olympus on Mars. We got up into orbit. We went out to Phobos and swapped out the crew, maybe dropped off some supplies. And then we left Phobos, came over here to Deimos, which is where we're at now. And we did the same thing. You know, I'm just going to say we swapped out a couple of crew members, dropped off some fresh supplies here at the base, and now we're ready to go back home. We're ready to go back to Olympus. So... One thing that I want to try to do as part of the flight back to Olympus is I wanted to figure out how can I arrive at Olympus to at a time where I'm sure that the sun will be overhead because um, in Orbiter 2016, when the sun's not shining over a base, it's just really, the visibility is terrible. So I wanted to uh, take some time to figure that part out. So let's go ahead and switch camera views here and jump into the XR2. In Map MFD, let me reference Mars and take a look at where we are currently at, or well, where the base is currently at in relation to the sun. So we can see if I target Olympus where that GL02 is at. So if I target the base, we can see that the you know the uh, the base is currently you know not quite the middle of the night, but it's late at night, and it's going to be uh, nighttime at Olympus for a few more hours so would now be a good time to leave you know if, if I left Olympus right or if I left Deimos right now would it work out so that by the time I arrived you know the the day night terminator will move over top of the base well we don't really know so uh, but we can find out and I'll walk you through the process that I put together to figure this out so I recorded the other parts uh, yesterday for me, which was July 16th, and today I'm recording these parts, which is July 17th. So between yesterday and today, I've uh, put together this little spreadsheet calculator thing to help me figure out when I can leave Deimos in order to arrive at Olympus when the sun's up. So I guess the first thing we need to know is, well, how long is it going to take us to go from Deimos down to Mars? Uh, so let's, uh, I'm going to bring up Interplanetary MFD, and before I forget, I'm going to turn off nodal regression. And uh, using the base approach program, um, I'm sure we could also do this with transects just by you know setting up negative prograde and and then doing the um, the eject date, or rather the the arrival date minus the eject date, and then we could figure it out that way. But I'm just going to use uh, base approach in interplanetary MFD to get some information here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change over to the old re-entry program. I don't, programmatically, I don't know what the difference is. Um, I'm also going to reference Mars because we're currently referencing Deimos. And we want to target Olympus. And before I set anything up here, I just want to get some parameters established. So I'm going to set my altitude as 30 kilometers, so 30K. Although I've found that's not accurate but I'm still going to set it like that and the anticipation angle I think that 21 is pretty good so I'm not going to change that uh, I believe the anticipation angle is basically you know how so if we set this to zero then we were saying that we want to arrive at the location of the base exactly on top of the base but that doesn't give us any time to do an atmospheric braking maneuver or use the retro engines to slow down. So I'm saying we want to arrive 21 degrees ahead of the base. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and set that to 25 degrees. So 25 degrees ahead of the base. All right, now I'm going to go over to uh, RET, which I think is, um, you know, re-entry time or something like that. And I'm just going to adjust that until my DV is at its lowest number. And I have noticed when I do this, you'll see the DV goes down. And then we get to a point here pretty soon where it starts going back up. See there it went back up higher, higher, but it will flip around and go back down again like that. So I'm going to go all the way down to 772. That's the lowest number I'm seeing. And then the next thing I want to do is I'm just going to adjust the TEJ here a little bit just to see if I can bring this down even lower. I'm going to set that to 10. This step's probably irrelevant, but I've noticed when I do this, it does 
uh, change their re-entry time just by a little bit. So yeah, we just put in you know a few hundred seconds there, and and now we have the uh, the lowest dV that we're going to find. Okay, so by doing that process, that gives me this number of twenty seven thousand five hundred and fifty seconds. So I can use that number to. So that's how long it's going to take me to go from Deimos down to their re-entry point at Mars, so 27,550 seconds. But that doesn't really mean anything if we don't know how long it takes Mars to rotate. So let me switch camera views here over to this little calculator I put together. And so this, this number here, Mars SID rot period, this is how many seconds it takes Mars to rotate one time, and it's really close to the same as Earth. And that number comes from uh, orbiter, your orbiter directory slash config mars.cfg. And on line 22, we have SID rot period equals 88,642.66435. So I just copy pasted that number over into my spreadsheet. And that's 88,642.66435 seconds. So this column over here, and ignore this bit down here for now, but this column is in seconds, and this column is in hours, minutes, and seconds, just for convenience. So we can see that, you know, if it takes Mars 88,642.66435 seconds to rotate, that's equivalent to 24 hours, 37 minutes, and 23 seconds. So it's really close to the same as Earth. And then I just have some additional conversions down here. Uh, the degree conversions for the sake of this flight aren't useful, but I'll just explain what it is. So there's 360 degrees in a circle. So it takes, uh, so in a, in, a, in a, when Mars rotates one degree, that's equivalent to 246.23 seconds or four minutes and six seconds. More useful to us is what, what I'm calling a square. And a square is just when you look at map MFD, and I'll get to that in a moment. But one square on Mars is equal to 7,000 386.89 seconds or two hours three minutes and seven seconds so what is a square so let's look at uh, map mfd and you'll notice there are these squares across the top let me just align this so that there there we go and there's 12 of these there's you know one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve there's 12 squares so what that number uh what this number here is is how long it takes um, you know, how much time it is for the Mars to rotate the equivalent of one square according to map MFD. And that's actually quite useful to us. And again, that's that number and converted it's two hours, three minutes and seven seconds. So finally, if we take this number that we got from interplanetary MFD, 27,550 seconds, and we divide that by, um, and we divide that by the number of squares, uh, or the time that it takes Mars to rotate one square, we can calculate how many squares behind the day-night terminator we want the base to be in order to make sure that when we arrive, the base is wherever you know we want it to be, which in my case, I'm going to say I want it to be about midday, uh, or you know mid-morning slash afternoon, early afternoon. So let's take this number, 27,550. Let's plug that into our calculator, 27,550 which is equivalent to seven hours and, you know, 39 minutes. And, you know, doing a quick calculation here, that's 3.73 squares that I want the base to be behind. Um, I said the day-night terminator, but that's actually not true. That's how far, that's how many squares behind I want the base to be my target landing time to be. So let's switch over to here and I'll show you what I mean. So obviously this is where the sun is at. So if I want to arrive mid-morning, you know, so let's say like right here, and I count backwards by 3.73 squares, that's one, two, three, and then if I go one more square, that's four. So right about here is 3.73 squares. So in theory, um, you know, according to the numbers, if the base were right here where the mouse is at, and then it takes us you know, seven hours and 39 minutes to get down to Mars, the, the day-night terminator will have moved over to the point where the, the base will then be 
uh, about right here. So the sun will be, you know, well overhead and we'll have really great visibility. So that's not for a while, uh, but currently the base is, you know, it's way back here. And if we, if we took off right now, we can count forward by 3.73 squares to see where it would be. So right now it's about in the middle. So one, two, three squares, uh, four squares is right here. So it would, the, if we took off and left right now, we would be arriving when the base was about right here. So just before, you know, a couple out, maybe an hour or so before daybreak, and that's no good. We wouldn't be able to see what we we're doing. So let's go ahead and just warp time forward in the simulator at, uh, you know, high warp value to about right, about right here. And now let's, uh, let's count again, um, you know, forward by 3.73 squares. So we, we go forward one, two, three full squares, and then four full squares is here, minus a little bit. So the base, if we left right this second, the base should be about right here when we, you know, when we arrive. And that's what we're, that's what we're aiming for. You know, mid morning, getting on to the afternoon, we'll have great visibility. But now that we've done all that time warp, you can see everything here has changed. So that's not a problem though. Uh, the, the number we have is still very accurate, but we want to check everything one more time. So I'm just going to go back to that RET, put in, a, you know, more time because we've warped time forward. And I want to bring that DV value back down to its lowest point, 37.1. So 37.1 is its lowest point. Now I don't have to worry about the TEJ because I want to leave right now. But now you can see that the RET is different than what we had before. Previously we had 27,550. So it's about 2,000 seconds of difference, which isn't a lot. But let's just see how it impacts, you know, our arrival and everything. So 25, so 25,500. So let's plug that number in, 25,500. Oops. And you can see now, instead of 3.72 squares, we want 3.45. So it really didn't change by much. So let's just say 3.5. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So now uh, we're going to be arriving, if, if we leave about right now, it's going to be 3.5 squares ahead, or you know, if we calculate that way, it's gonna be 3.5 squares behind. But if the base is here, we count forward, one, two, three and a half. So the base should be around this area here by the time we arrive. And even if we're off by several thousand seconds in either direction, it's going to be fine. But at the very least, we know that we're not going to be arriving in the middle of the night or something like that. And that's the key thing that I was wanting to avoid um, when I went back down to Olympus. I didn't want to arrive in the middle of the night. Okay, so we're ready to fly. But before we do, let's go ahead and set up some ComNav information so that when we're getting ready to land, we're not scrambling at the last moment to set up our data. So let's bring up... Let's bring up base. Let's find Olympus on our list. And here we are. And let's put in, let's put the log range in on number one. So that's 114.20. And let's put landing pad one because three is not free, but one and two are free. So let's see, do one, 129.70 on landing pad. Uh, for landing pad number one. So now we have our comm nav set up. Let me just double check. 114.20, 129.70. Okay, we're all good. All right, I'm going to say we're ready to fly. So let's get underway here. We still have a couple minutes left on this uh, part. So let's get, let's get going. But before we do, let me uh, turn off external cooling. Using onboard O2. And I think that's it. I think everything else is ready. And I do know that when we take off and fly our burn vector we're almost facing in the direction we're going to be flying so we're just going to be pitched up a little bit and over to the right so in other words we're not going to be we're not going to be trying to fly through demos and that's really important so we we know that we don't have to worry about you know our orientation so we can just hover up hit auto burn and go all right so let me put in just a little bit of a uh, hover here wheels up about right there turn that off turn on the AP really quick and we can go ahead and auto burn and I'm just gonna close everything up landing Clear gear up. hover retro in 
information. Gear APU up and fuel. Low. 90%. Now I can turn off the APU. And we can look in our cameras just to see, you know, behind us. You can see from the tail camera that, you know, we're leaving Demos behind, you know, so we don't have to worry about running through it. That's definitely something to take into account because I have had it happen where, you know, I've tried to do certain maneuvers and I'm not paying attention to the orientation and then I go to do the burn. And I'm like, wait a minute, this is going to send me through Earth or this is going to send me through the moon or in this case, you know, try to send me through Demos. Um, but we didn't have to worry about that in this case. All right, so that has us lifted up off of Demos. We have our, our main burn done. We're on our way back to Mars. And one thing I'll point out really quick, you'll notice again, I put in a 30 kilometer altitude, but I have noticed in doing this flight that that is not accurate and I don't know why, but you'll see that it has us actually negative five uh, kilometers below the surface. And this is pretty accurate because, you know, when you're, when you're looking at orbit MFD, and you're close to the moon, you can't even, your PEA is useless. Like if you're referencing Earth, it's just useless. But we're, we're referencing Mars and our PEA is negative five. And, I, and this is accurate because the, the gravitational influence of Deimos is so low that it's not having really any impact on that number. So I do know that when we are getting down towards Mars, that number is going to be correct. So we want to take that into uh, consideration as we get down. All right, so with that in mind, let's go ahead and warp time forward. Let's get closer to Mars. So we're 24,000 seconds out. Let's just go down to where we're, you know, a few thousand seconds away, something like that. All right, now we're uh, referencing Mars here on orbit, um, on the surface hut, rather. So let's think about what do we need to do. Let's bring up the 2D panel because I know that eventually I'm going to want to use the autopilot and I'm going to set it for like 40 degrees initially. So when we come into Mars and we engage the autopilot, uh, I'll have it, I'll have it, you know, have it hold the, out the uh, angle of attack at 40 degrees. And then on this side, I'm going to bring up arrow break MFD so we have Mars reference. Now I'm going to target Olympus. And I finally remember the shortest way to get to the map. I used to know this very well back in Orbiter 2010, but I've over the last couple months I've been stumbling. I keep like pressing page, page, then PRJ. Eventually I find it. But I finally remember the fastest way to get to the map that I'm looking for is just PRJ, then PG. That sequence gets me exactly what I want. Okay, so let's see. Uh, we're coming up on 20 minutes, so this will be a good stopping point. Let me go ahead and switch camera views here. And let me actually do a, a quick save. Uh, so just in case I screw up the re-entry, which is uh, not all that unlikely, or um, actually I don't think the re-entry will be a problem. What, what, what I foresee as being a potential, potential problem is just overshooting the base or something like that. So I've got a quick save here. So if something goes wrong, we will come back to this point right here where we are, you know, about 5,400 kilometers above Mars. This will be a good spot to pick back up. Okay, so with all that said, uh, we'll wrap it up here and I will see you in the next part.